Hello, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to show you how easy it is to use the sounds of the Korg wave state in your sequencer. In this example, I use Ableton, but you can do the same in other DAWs. For this project, I play a few parts with VSTs, and now I want to use the Korg wave state to add sounds to that project. Now, how do you do that? Well, you start with the, uh, connecting the outputs of your wave state to the audio inputs of your sound card. The audio of the wave state isn't transferred through a USB, so you have to use an external input of your sound card. Also, be sure that you have connected your wave state with a USB cable to your computer so that you can send MIDI to it so that you can use the wave state editor. Okay, let's start with this project. I've played a few parts already with VSTs. And now let's set up uh, Ableton to use the Korg wave state for this project. Well, the first, of, first part you have to do one time is say to Ableton um, that you want to use the Korg wave state MIDI inputs. If you go to Options Preferences and the MIDI tab, you will see that, that there is a wave state 1 input and a wave state 1 output. Well, you want to track the wave state inputs, for instance, for if you play on the keyboard or if you use the white performance knob for MIDI controls. And for the output, you want to set the track and the sync at least. The sync is needed to send the MIDI clock to it, and the output is just for sending notes to it. That's all you have to do for to set this up. Now, you have your project. Now you have to say, hey, I want to use a MIDI channel to the Korg wave state, and I want to collect the out audio output of the wave state in this project. So we are going to insert a MIDI track, and we are going to insert, insert an audio track. Well, we'll name it uh, MIDI wave state. And for the audio, we say audio wave state. So now that we have named our channels, we know what these channels are doing in this project. So we have to say to the MIDI wave state uh, lane that it has to send its MIDI output to the wave state. And in the MIDI 2 tab, of MIDI 2 drop down list, you can select the wave state 1 output. And it depends a little bit on your core wave state, how you set it up. But if you the global channel set to 1, that's the default, then select channel 1. For the audio wave state, we need to say, hey, we have an uh, external audio card of an audio card connected, and we want to use inputs from that. And we select one of the inputs. Well, I have 26. Uh, inputs on my audio card, and I know that I connected that to number 910. That input channel is used for the Korg wave state. I've connected it to those two inputs. We set the monitor to in for that audio channel, so it always will listen to everything we play on the Korg uh, wave state. Well, let's arm the MIDI wave state channel. If we play something now, it's standing on the inner performance, you will hear the inner performance sound. The MIDI is sent to uh, the Korg wave state and you see here that the audio is coming in your project in Ableton. Well, luckily we have now the Korg wave state editor, which makes lives a lot easier. Let's connect it to the wave state, it does. And let's select the sound we want to uh, record. Well, let's use one of my own sounds. So we have selected the uh, sound, the QA Love Saw, and that's basically this sound. So massive sound, um, way too massive for this project, so we're probably going to change it later on. But let's say that you want to record a part. Well, I set up a basic uh, sound in this project. So let's record something like that. OK, 
Okay, so we recorded the part and as you can see, my playing wasn't that accurate. So let's fix that. Select all the notes, quantize, make the notes shorter and press legato. So now it's played perfectly, which I obviously can't do. And if you play it now in the project, Everything is played for me, uh, so I can record that audio part from the Korg wave state if I want. Now, if I want to use uh, to record autom uh, automation, like the cutoff for instance, uh, you have to do that through the wide performance knobs. Well, in my own uh, sounds, all sounds are using the wide knobs for cutoff and resonance and all other kind of things, but uh, performance knob one is used for the cutoff on all four layers. So what you can do is uh, record it or just draw it in. So let's draw that uh, MIDI controller information in. And we say uh, for performance knob one, which is um, control change 24, we want to draw uh, a line. So let's say we want to have this um, with such a shape, we'll open and close and for this, uh, for this part, we want to have something like this. Um, well, do something like this. When we play the part now, so you hear. It reacts to that controller information and it's uh, the performance knob 24 is the first wide performance knob in your utility MIDI settings. You can see which control changes are used for the, for the several uh, performance knobs. Okay, let's remove this. It was just to show how this uh, works. And let's add a sound to this project, uh, a real sound we are going to use. And we are going to use the QR offshore plug. Also a sound like a something like this. So let's create a pattern with that offshore plug. We are going to do that on a slightly slower uh, tempo to make it ourselves easier. So we have created a pattern of um, eight measures. Let's quantize the whole section. Okay, perfect. You can set it to 130 again. And because we had the sync option activated, uh, the wave state honors that uh, the tempo. So now we are going to record that part uh, in an audio channel so that we can work with that audio uh, again and then select a new uh, sound. So the only thing you have to do is um, set it to uh, record. Okay, we had a nine measured uh, pattern. And one thing that you have to do is uh, zoom in at the beginning and you will see that there is a slight delay uh, and that's called layer delay latency. 
Um, and the latency is the delay you have set up in your uh, audio card. In my case, I'm using a delay of um let's see audio six and eleven that's 17 milliseconds 17.4 milliseconds um and we don't want that um you can do some automatic delay compensation but um in this case we have a dsw so um you see in uh, ableton that it starts at this this marker so let's drag the file to that marker that's the start let's go to the end by nine. Oh, oh let's make it a little smaller and let's do the same over there you will see it ends a little bit later so let's go to there so um and we say crop clip so now it's perfect and we give it its own lane so that we can record new parts uh, with our core uh, wave state setup. We don't need the MIDI parts anymore. And now we have um, our audio file recorded for our project. So absolutely perfect and the beauty part of this is that we can use all the effects in our dsw uh, to make uh, make it even fit better in our project so let's say let's add a specific delay on it um, for instance one of my own presets this is a delay and let's hear how that sounds You hear the delay adds all kind of resonant uh, delay taps on top of it, uh, if I do it without it. And set it to on. So, and you can do much more experimental stuff. Let's say, let's add a filter on top of it. Um, we have a Sam filter, a mini mock filter, or an Oberheim filter. Let's add the Oberheim filter and set, for instance, the filter to some experimental uh, resonance and cutoff routings. And let's see how that turns out. So really uh, great, um, especially when you hear it in the complete uh, uh, arrangement, um, like this. adds a lot of flavor to it it's a little bit loud now so i have to set it a little bit down in the mix but if we add the saw uh, melodies on top of it This is completely unmixed, um, so when you fatten it up uh, in the uh, end states, yeah, well, it will sound absolutely great. So within a few few things, you have added your own uh, material from the core wave state to your project, and you can do this kind of things also in real time. Um, let's say that we add uh, sound like a, uh, a lead sound, for instance.
Okay, nice sound. Um, let's. Uh, let's add some real time uh, effects on top of it. For instance, the small distortion uh, effects. Trash. Um, some subtle distortion. Well, I like this and add some effects on top of it. So this is the wave state now uh, in real time going through your DHW effects. So experiment a lot with that and you can do everything you want by doing it this way. So hopefully you can use it now in your DHW and uh, the important parts are that you have to use your wave state, uh, your wave state editor. Use the performance knobs for automation. It starts with control change 24. Uh, if, you, if you don't have automation, simply connect the knobs to the param parameters of your choice. So it's control change 24, 25, 26, 27, etc. Create a MIDI channel. Um, Connect it to your wave state on channel one and connect your wave state with audio cables to your inputs of your audio card and select that and set monitor in to in. When you record something, don't forget to set the delay compensation in the beginning and the ending. And that's basically it. And then you can add anything you want. So hopefully this was helpful and let's see you again later.